Good morning, everybody. Um, maybe it's night, I don't know. The clock thing on my computer has malfunctioned. I have no idea what time it is. Could be afternoon. Good afternoon. Be quiet, phone. Mom is in surgery. Well, she could be out by now, I'm not sure. Um, she had to get the stint removed. So, yeah. And I was gonna stay home because I needed to shower and stuff for the work thing tonight. And then while I was in the shower, they called and said that it's canceled. So I'm like, oh, okay. They wanted me to come in Friday, but Friday Dad and I are going to pick up the um, truck thing. So I don't know what's going on. I feel weird and it's just like, yeah. Trying to do a thing for um, Tumblr. You take pictures of stuff, and one of them is like a picture of something weird that you own. And I'm like, I don't have, like, I uh, know I do, but I don't have anything with me. Like, everything that I have is in storage. So, and even my weird stuff that people would go, why? I don't have stuff. I figured something out. But, anyways, um, the hospital just called for me this time. I guess I got approved for my financial aid help something or another thing, so that's good. That's really good. So I'm just waiting on a letter to get back from that now. And yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm gonna go and try and find something to do this thing with. Look at this one that I did, guys. I just finished it. Okay, so... My dream started off with... That... Evie and I stayed in the van while Dad went, Mom and Dad went in to a store. And this odd guy walked out of the store. And so I locked the van doors because he kind of really creeped me out. And because we'd forgotten to lock the van doors when Mom and Dad got out the first time. So, the guy walked, just kind of smiled at me and walked around the van and Evie and I were talking and the guy knocks on the back door, like wanting me to open the door. And I'm like, no, because I don't know you, you're not allowed in our van. And so he kind of got mad. And then he's just like, open the door. <clears throat> I'm like, no, I'm not going to. And he walks around to the driver's side of the door and breaks the glass open. And then climbs into the van. And then, Evie and I are freaking out. Well, he didn't really climb into the van, though. He, like, climbed in and grabbed something and got back out. But it wasn't, like, stealing something and leaving. He was, like, staring at me. And so, somehow, I managed to get out of the van. And then Evie and I ran into the store where dad and mom were, and I was freaking out and telling dad that the guy broke into the van, and that he busted the window and all that, and dad's just kind of like, what are you talking about, and then the guy, like, got in the van, started it, and I'm like, he's stealing the van now, and... I, like, panicked because I'm like, oh, no, I left my purse in there, which means he's going to get my, you know, personal information and stuff. But he didn't. He ran the van into the side of the building and tore, like, a chunk partially off of the front tire. Like, it ripped, but it didn't bust the tire. And then he turned and hit something else. And then he hit a vehicle. And then he ran back up towards the store that we were in. And by this point, I had already called the cops. And the guy, like, 
steps right in front of the store that we were in. And we, there, there's a cop outside, and he's got a gun trained on the guy. And we step outside, and the cop hands me the gun. And I'm like, wait, what? And he's like, no, it's okay. And then he says, okay, now focus in on him. And then... Um, pull, squeeze the trigger back. And I did, but nothing happened. And the guy's just sitting in the vehicle staring at me. But by this time, he's sitting in a car, not in the van anymore. And... He... Okay, and then the cop says to... Um, move the gun up, like, in a straight line above his head, and release the trigger. And I did, and then a giant log falls out of the sky and crushes the guy. And then falls on the hood of the car, and I'm like, whoa, what? And then he's like, oh, good job, blah, 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 we've apprehended him, and this and that. And then... Um... Next thing I know, we're all climbing into the van. Um, Mom and Dad, Evie, the police van sits next to Evie. And then I have to get into the back seat of the van. So I sit in the center. And then we're leaving. And I was looking around. And I looked to my right. And the guy was there. But he was wrapped up in, like plastic bags, like a body or something, but he, like, shifted, and I freaked out, so I moved to the right side, like, I unbuckled and moved, and the guy's, like, moving, I'm like, he's not dead, he's moving, and the policeman's like, it's okay, don't worry about it, and the guy gets, like, his hands loose from the plastic bags, and they were, like, duct taped around him. And the guy, like, kept touching me. Like, just trying to poke me or touch me with his hand. Not inappropriately or anything, just, yeah. And I'm like, he keeps touching me, he won't blah 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 and this and that. And the guy just wouldn't leave me alone. And then we we were driving, like, along a freeway or whatever. I don't know where we were going. And... We had to stop at a rest stop. So we did that. And then I had to take Evie in because no one else had to go. And it was, like, raining. And I'm, like, trying to find the... bathroom. And then I found it. And Evie wouldn't move. And I'm like, come on, Evie, we're getting soaked standing out here, just move already. And so I pushed her in, and it was like, it had like four toilets. Then all of a sudden there were six. Um, and they were all in one room, right next to each other. And the door wouldn't lock, or even shut. So there were other people, and there were people sitting like on the side in folding chairs, like, watching us. But for some reason, it didn't freak me out, and I went to the bathroom. And then there were these Asian girls that were showing up, and one of them had some kind of weird mixture, like, in a plastic bucket thing. And she drank it, and then threw up. <clears throat> and then it was all, like, bloody and stuff, and she just kind of set it on the shelf and left, and everyone else was just acting like it was totally normal. By this point, Evie had already finished and went back to the van, so I finished and went to go back to the van, but as I walked towards the van, they, Dad pulled away from the curb and drove away, and then it's just this giant, like, rest stop building something 
And so I started running, trying to catch up with the van. And there were so many people and cars and... But the van was just gone. And I was panicking because I didn't have a cell phone to call anyone. And I was stuck here. And then I saw my Aunt Lois near the Porta Johns. And I'm like, Aunt Lois, can I borrow your phone to call my mom because they left me here and she said yeah and so I was trying to call her like I looked scrolled down and I found mom's number and I hit call but for some reason it called my uncle David instead and I don't know why he was in her phone anyways and then he hung up on me and I tried calling grandma I called the house phone, but for some reason, my friend Bunny picked up. And she was just like, she was all grumpy and stuff because she'd been woken. And she did, she was just like, this better be important. You are going to be in trouble or something? And I'm like, Bunny, it's Mango. She goes, oh, okay, you're not in trouble. And I said, I told her that I was like, stuck at a rest stop and asked her if she could call my mom's cell phone and tell her to come back and get me. And then she said something like threatening because they like just abandoned me. And then her sister was in the background, but it sounded like Rainbow's sister and she was asking something and it was like something really stupid and I'm just like, I need to go. And her sister's in the background like, no, you're not allowed to go until you answer it. And ask the question again. And I'm just like, no, because that's stupid. And then... I was walking around. Like, out back of a building. And there were just so many people, but my parents were nowhere around. And I was freaking out because I didn't know how I would get home. And then the house phone here rang and it woke me up. I have an obsession. It's the fifth bracelet that I've made and I made a necklace as well. I'm having fun. I'm probably going to actually think what I'm going to do is because I'm really, really loving making these right now. I'm going to get out that book that I have of people's favorite colors and make some and send them to them. Sounds fun. Did I show you guys that I made that one? I don't know if I did. Um, and I made one. Where is it? I don't know if I showed you guys. I already put it in this. It's that one. Um, back in the thing with the rest of the other stuff. Yeah, um, work never called back, so that's nice. Um, I kind of actually had a strong feeling that was gonna happen. So, call in the morning, getting up. Oh, I gotta call in the morning. Do that. Go somewhere or something. It's really, really windy out. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. So, call in the morning. Hope they're not mad. Because she wanted to reschedule for Friday, but I'm not gonna be here Friday because, you know, the only, you know, the one ride that I have is gonna be elsewhere Friday doing something. So, I can't. And then. Leaving Saturday, and oh, so I might end up not actually working there. Like, they might kind of get really upset. And I understand, you know, you hire someone, you want them to be there. And uh, if I had known, you know, that we we're doing what we're doing Saturday, then I would have put, you know, I can't start until after this day, but whatever. So. Yeah, that's what's going on. My back kind of hurts. It's weird. My back hurts. I haven't done anything. I haven't been lifting about well, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Hi, guys. I'm going to go to bed. So, I hope you all have a wonderful night, slash morning, slash whatever it is, wherever you are. I'll see you all tomorrow. All tomorrow. Good night. Good night.
ocean waves by your side. I'd lie for a thousand days, keep it bright. Your soul burning through the haze in a fight. Our love will break through this.